Yankees. Let's go right to the seventh inning. Blue Jays and Yanks. Tom Wilson rips that on Ted Lilly. Ted Lilly had been pitching very well, but that goes out. We got a 1-1 ball game. Roy Halladay locked up with Lilly. So, 1-1 game. Carlos Delgado, who is hitting very well, comes out against Mike Stanton and could have used a little help. Could have used a little help, and this is Alfonso Soriano. He normally makes his play. It's scored a hit, but he stumbled a little bit getting to it, and Shannon Stewart run the whole way, scores on that ball. Soriano's become a pretty good second baseman. And he probably should have done a little better job on that. And here, the infield is in, so Soriano's got a long way to go for this ball. It's usually Shane Spencer's ball, but he's got a long way to go. Of course, the infield's back there. Very catchable ball. Just hit it right in between. The next batter is Vernon Wells. And here, look, Nick Johnson, by stepping on first, removes the force play with a man on third. This, that's a crucial decision. It is, but what a great job by Cruz staying in the run down long enough to let the run score. Huge, huge run for the Toronto Blue Jays, as we will find out. Yes, the, the closer is Kelvin Escobar for Buck Martinez. Now he comes on, bottom of the night. Nobody on, two outs. This thing's all but over. It's 4-1. Not so fast, my friend. Enrique Wilson. He's kind of flicked that one, didn't he? Short porch. porch. Yeah, it's out of there. there you go. 4-2. Next man up is Shane Spencer. Uh, no, not yet. Buck Martinez, does he hold on? Yeah, Jorge Posada, 2 for 17 in his career against Escobar. You know, walked in. Not over yet. Next man up, Alfonso Soriano, who is, you know, between 380 and 400. Base it back up the middle. A run will score 4-3. Next man up, Bernie Williams with the game on the line. Two outs. He'd already hit his first homer of the season, so he's starting to see the ball better. Base hit, Bernie Williams. Clutch. Jorge Posada will score. Four, four, all tied up. Next man up is Derek Jeter. Escobar, whoa, look, gets away. Runners on second and third. Now from there, get this, Buck Martinez, walk him, walk him, and get to the MVP, the best offensive player in the league. Had to tell catcher Tom Wilson twice. No, I did say four. Put him on. Are you sure, Skip? <laughs> uh, do, you, do you see what's up? But they bring on Dan Plesak. A two for 12 in his career against Plesak, the lefty specialist who is 40 years old. Now, first of all, Tom Wilson saved the game. Glove save and a beauty. He got plenty of work with Kelvin Escobar throwing those 40-foot fork balls and blocking it. This is purely reactionary play. No chance to get your body in front of it. Use that leather. Next pitch, Plesak, two and two. 40 years of age. He struck him out. Plesak said it's the one guy you don't want to see up there with the game on the line. But the closer got him. The closer from the 80s, Ramiro Mendoza. In the top of the 10th, that's the rookie, Eric Hinsky. Opposite field shot, first homer of the year, 5-4. And Plesak would finish this one up. Dan Plesak comes out, Jambi 0 for 5. They're pitching, they're pitching around. I mean, that's one thing we saw. You know, Danny Batista felt insulted. Half station Jambi field. The guy's a 700 slugger. Well, matchup. After Escobar threw that ball in the dirt, Buck just saw and said, what if he throws one more in the dirt? We lose the game here. His, his, his closer struggled. He had NL East Mets and Expos. What is going on? 24 errors. That leads the league, leads all of Major League Baseball. Piazza. Throwing a second. This is, Alma, a throw. this is as oh. good a throw as Piazza can make, and Robbie was trying to tag, I think, before and again. Robbie's got as good a hands as any second baseman I've ever seen, and he just has not yeah, had a typical Robbie Alomar year defensively. Now here, Vladimir Guerrero puts that in. Bergeron will score, makes it a 3-2 game. Lee Stevens puts this into right field. Vladimir Guerrero coming around. We got a play to the plate. Jeremy Bernitz got excited. All right, Jeremy Bernitz really throws well, but not on that one. He got a little bit too rushed on. He never got his body upright enough. His arm was behind him and his body was in front of him. He kind of threw it right into the ground. Yeah, Mike, this is bad defensive energy at this point. Look, Super Joe McEwing there. That gets away on a double play ball on Mike Barrett. Just couldn't get the ball out of his glove. Threw a two uh, splitter over there. It's getting worse and worse. Again, th this is supposed to be a team strength defense in the out in the infield then next man up is Orlando Cabrera after Barrett went all the way to third he'll score easily here Cabrera goes to second the thing is is everybody's making them pay every error the Mets are making just gets magnified in the inning and now here's Jose Vidro and uh, trying to steal off 
Mike Piazza hit his own pitcher. I've went right off Pete Walker. I've never seen that. Oh. Mike, you never did that, right? Well, he just got on the backside and out front too quick. Yeah, Piazza's saying, what's next? Now, Piazza's probably thinking, no, that can't hit Pete Walker. <laughs> Vidro back up the middle, drives in a run. Expos take it 7-5. to five. Mets have allowed 17 unearned runs this year. Sean Estes has yet to win for the Mets. He could have gotten a little more help there. He's 0-2, his ERA 5.09. Carl Pavano gets the win for the Expos. His ERA still over four in his... Braves fish up one nothing. Derek Lee facing Greg Maddox. Vinny Castilla, super play, goes the short way, hitting over. Maddox gave up one earned in six innings. Bottom six, same score. Rothfield for Carl Bunning with a runner on first. A.J. Burnett boots it. He got both runners safe, and Burnett basically made two mistakes. That one and this one. Uh-oh. First pitch, Chipper saw he knocked it out of the yard. Two-run lead, Chipper two for four. Top nine, one on John Smoltz. Tim Raines, who's as old as Methuselah, swing and a miss. Save for Smoltz. Braves have won the first two games of the series. And three straight after a four-game losing streak. Smoltz by one in the bottom of the eighth. Al Levine facing Carlos Pena. Pena ground ball to first. Scott Spezio pulls David Eckstein off second base. Everyone is safe. And that proved to be critical because later in the inning, game tied at seven. Levine facing Scott Hatterberg nearly had his head taken off. Hatterberg brings up Carlos Pena. The A's go up eight to seven, and that's the score they win by. Barry Zito spotted a six-run lead, but unable to turn it into a victory. He's just a 500 pitcher in day games, eight and eight. All in bad news for the Texas Rangers Saturday. Yvonne Rodriguez has a herniated disc in his lower back. He's out four to six weeks. Pudge did not even make the team's road trip to Seattle. He will likely go on the 15-day DL Monday or Tuesday. So the Rangers without Pudge at Safeco Field Saturday night. Jeff Cirillo tied for the major league record for consecutive games at third without an error. Top six, Bill Hasselman to third. And sure enough, Cirillo can't make the play. Hasselman into second. So much for the record. But you know what? Before the game, Cirillo actually had a premonition that this might happen. There he is. You know, it's hard not to take it out there. And think about it, you know, as the game's going on, especially a big right-hander comes up. And Hasselman would qualify as a big right-hander. There it is. E5. Bottom nine, Ichiro facing Hideki. Arabu tied it two with the bases loaded, and Arabu gets the comebacker. And we've got bonus baseball 2-2 two -two after nine to the 11th with two on Chris Mahalik. Walks Ichiro intentionally to load him up, bring in Dan Maselli. So it's righty to face righty. Cirillo up now with the bases loaded. Maselli the 3-1, and there's your ball game. Maselli comes in, faces one guy, walks in the winning run. Game's over, M's win 3-2. Rangers' bullpen blows its seventh save opportunity of the year. That leads the majors. It's the Mariners' ninth comfort behind victory this season. What did Barry Bonds do? Well, we're fixing to tell you. First inning, no score, facing Tim Redding, making his first start of the year, and Bonds rips it. And that's a very loud double Lance Berkman, who leads Barry Bonds by a homer. Couldn't make the play. Bonds is two for three, two doubles. But J.T. Snow is doing plenty of work as well. He rips a single to center. Bonds comes in. Jeff Kent, who had three hits in the game, comes in. 7-2 Giants. Snow had a monster tonight. We'll tell you about his numbers momentarily. Bottom eight, it's 11-7 Giants. Brad Austin is up. Two runners on facing Felix Rodriguez. I don't know how anybody can hit Felix Rodriguez. Austin does. Two runs come in to score. It's 11-9. We've got some problems. Let's end Rob Ned to Bagwell. Pedro Feliz, can he gut out Jeff Bagwell? Yes, he can. That snuffs the threat. Giants add two in the ninth and win 13-9. Giants now 11-0 at Astros Field. Josh Pierce coming up out of AAA facing Jeffrey Hammonds. Sexton on deck. Goodbye. Way out of here. To the wall. No, he brought it back in. Look at the cut away quickly, and it did not go out. So they had the call right, as it turns out. Watch it closely. Brought back in Eduardo Perez. Everybody's looking in the upper deck. <laughs> hey, let's go to J.D. Drew now in the fifth inning. And uh, Tim, what's going on uh, here? It's the top of the fifth here. The Brewers are ahead three to one. J.D. Drew, two out, two on, drops a bunt here, and he gets thrown out. And J.D. Drew is a great hitter. He's a big time home run hitter. And I think he's got to try to hit a double there instead of bunting to load the bases. Here's Edgar Renteria in the seventh. Cards down three one, and he drills that all the way to the wall. Two runs have come in here. 
And we got a tie ball game, so the cards do eventually tie this one up. The bottom of the seventh, still 3 3. Dave Veers is on. Alex Sanchez puts that Eduardo Perez again. No, couldn't hold on. A run will score. Sanchez will be thrown out, but it's a 4-3 Brewers lead. It's 5-3 in the ninth. Mike Dijon, oh, gets a good call there on J.D. Drew. Full count, saves him. Now, next pitch, I thought that was a ball, Mike. This, I think that's a strike. Yes, struck him out. Got him. Dijon, at that point, Hillers is like, you know, we can't win. Dijon, his third save of the season, two scoreless innings. Now you got the... <laughs> hey, the game's over. You don't need it back in my head. Incoming. <laughs> yeah. Matt Morris is the only St. Louis starter with a win. Josh Pierce was brought up. It's not like, hey, we can't keep this kid down here. He was 0-3 and had an ERA of 6.19 in AAA, and they press him into service. And Josh Pierce is the eighth different starting pitcher they've used this year. And like everybody else in the lineup and the pitching and defense. Terry Adams is on the hill. He'd get some help. Oh, no, he would. Jimmy Rollins went through him. E6. Then Kevin Young, two men later. Puts this to right, Doug Glanville. That's a tough play. Couldn't make that catch. It's first and third. Armando Rios is there. They've got a lot of guys in the low 200s in this batting order. They're hitting 226 coming into this game, and they're in first place in their division. Look at this roller. Got to eat it. Scott Rowland couldn't get it. Rob McCowiak there. Everybody's safe. Keith Osick is next. Keith Osick. Cheap. Mike Lieberthal off. Cheap. Uh, no, a run will score. It's 2 nothing Pittsburgh. Jack Wilson after this. Jack Wilson would say, you know, last year this ball is caught, but not this time around. Over Pat Burrell. One run will score. Two runs will score. Do it for the Pirates. Three runs will score. That ball should have been caught this year. That's a 5 nothing ball. Oh, come on. It's a tough play. Now, defensively, Mike, what, just again, bad karma for the Phillies. What's right now, it looks like bad karma. Mike Lieberthal, very solid back there. Takes a peek a little quick, forgets the ball. Happens. I don't know about this, though. Tim, you think this is going to be caught? Watch where the ball lands. Just over the outstretched arm. Get to the warning track. He's playing when awfully shallow. You and Larry Bow are in the same boat. When you're going good. Uh, Scott Rowland with two on. Hold on. Not done yet. Rips this on Ron Ballone. So it's a 6-3 ball game. Top of the eighth. Mike Lieberthal with a man on. There's the catcher. Strokes this of Mike Fetters. It's a 6-5 ball game. Enter Mike Williams in the ninth. Two outs. Williams. He struck him out. Oh, you got to be confident to throw that. And he got him. And the Pirates win it 6-5. Jack Wilson, again, a great fielding shortstop. Hitting 179 going in. Three for four with three RBIs. Mike Williams said, you know, it's a little bit early, but I hope we're saying in July it's a little bit early. It's early, but they're playing very well. well. That bullpen ERA is 2.42. They have eight errors the whole year. Rafael Fercal has seven by himself. Him against the Reds, he has dominated this team. But on this bunch here, he's, he just looks at second a little too long, takes his time going to first. Wilton Guerrero can fly. That's not a guy you take your time on. And this is Roosevelt Brown in left field. I'm not sure oh, what no. happened here. That ball hit him right in the center of the glove. That's a no-no. Good for Barry Larkin there. He was tagging on that play. Wasn't even going halfway, and he still got to third. And here's here's Encarnacion with a really good piece of hitting, rifling one down the left field line, right field line. And this is three unearned runs against Kerry Wood in the first inning, and it really got the Reds going. We go to the top of the fifth now. Look at one on Encarnacion. We'll get back to him, Wood. No. Lost Guerrero. Lost Adam Dunn, not a bad idea, and then walked Aaron Boone. Loads the bases with two outs, and now, Mike, here is Juan Encarnacion. Watch this at bat, Juan Encarnacion. Two outs, bases loaded, called sticking your face in there and having a battle. Total of 11 pitches from Kerry Woods, up and in, down and away, staying alive and putting the ball in play. No, just fighting things off. Finally gets the bases loaded walk. 11 pitch walk. Great at bat. And from there, look at Wilton Guerrero out of your second base. This is a very tough play, guys. Look at that. Over your shoulder, hear those footsteps coming. Don't see that play made too many times. 6-1 is the final. Elmer descends the ace. Goes seven and a third shutout innings. He's one and three, but his ERA is 1.88. He's allowed one earned run in his last three starts. Kerry Woods' ERA uh, balloons up to 2.38. Again, his first loss to the Reds. American League, but things were going so well for the Indians, but now they go up against the Twins on Tom Kelly night. The twins would be inspired. Old manager there, Jock Jones. 
Rips this. Brady Anderson shoot tops. A.J. Pruszynski heads up play would score here, Mike. Great job of base running. He went back on that line drive, making it a sacrifice fly. Hey, even in a loss sometimes, it's a great outing for the other team. Einar Diaz has been struggling throwing runners out all year long. Money on that throw. Still doing it, whatever it takes to get it done behind home plate. In the second inning here, watch the block. Bouncing to his feet and making the accurate throw down to third base. Another caught stealing. Had a great game behind there. Collision home plate. Held on to it. Einar turning things around defensively. That, that, that's, that's the best throw ever that, that he made down there. A perfect throw. Here, Torrey Hunter, sixth homer of the year. Twins take a 3 nothing lead. Now, top of the sixth, it's 5 nothing Twins, but uh, not over yet. Ellis Burks facing Matt Kinney. Kinney got him. Burks came into the game. Batting 397 in the eighth. J.C. Romero comes on. Oh, whoa. Oh, he's a mad. Burke's arguing that. Yikes. He wouldn't hell. That was a tough call. Bottom eight. Bases loaded. A.J. Pruszynski against Mark Wohlers. Pruszynski rips that base hit. Bobby Kelty coming around. He's going to try to score. Here we go. We got to play to the plate. Oh, Diaz again, and he holds on. Mike, who killed you the hardest at home plate? Gary Guy Eddie knocked me out for a month, I think. Eddie Gordado comes on. And Corey Koski with the scoop. Uh, Tim, we've been talking about J.C. Romero and Eddie Gordado. Uh, right now, that's an elite bullpen. And that was a questionable bullpen coming into the season. And if, again, if it pitches like that all year, they're going to be right there at the end. Indians have lost five in a row. They've been outscored 42 to 13 during that streak. Now, this is a team, again, uh, they get swept by Chicago and beaten up, facing a sweep now by Minnesota. And they got a four-game series next with the White Sox. Bad time to get cold. Load him up and put too much pressure on your pitcher. There's nowhere to put him. Tigers and White Sox, here we go. He got the big three for Chicago. Frank Thomas, Maglio Ordonez, and Paul Canerco. Three, four, and five. The heart of the order has been sensational. Thomas will draw a walk. Did it right there. Next man up. Ordonez rips that down the line. Drives in Tony Graffinino. The White Sox take a 1-0 lead. There would be more where that came from. Now, Nate Cornejo. Not expected of him coming up for the Tigers, and he is really struggling. Walks Thomas here, loads him up. Ordonez would fly out, bases loaded for Canerco, and oh, no. That thing's high. Uh, what, too high? What do you mean, too high? Grand slam. White Sox take a 6-2 lead. Uh, let's go to the fourth inning. Maybe it's the ski hats that are working for him. It's 7-2. Two. two outs, one on. The big hurt. He's been struggling at the plate lately, but when he can get those arms extended, if you get it away from him at all, he can really hurt you. It's 9-2. Here's uh, Ordonez with Matt Parrish. How sweet is that? Magdalene Ordonez, Edgar Martinez, two of the prettiest right-handed swings in the game. Caneco with the shot to left field. He's the next man up. They're not done yet. The White Sox lineup, the big three, go 9 for 12. They reached base in 12 of 15 appearances. If you want to throw, you don't have to go 3, 4, 5. You can throw on Jose Valentin. They're combined 11 for 17 with 11 RBIs. White Sox lead the American League in runs scored. They're slugging 509 as a team. Is that good? That's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> That's a team. They've scored 10 or more runs four times this year. They didn't get their fourth 10-run game until... Rockies D-backs, snakes are already up 3-1, and the bases are loaded for Steve Finley. Dennis Reyes gets smoked in the right center and out towards where the pool is. And everybody on the bases runs as fast as their little legs will carry them, and it's 6-1 Diamondbacks. Top five, one out. It's now 9-4. It's now 9-7. Todd Helton takes Rick Helling out of the yard, his second of the year. A 12 RBI, and here come the Rocks. Top eight, Brett Prince facing Todd Zeal with a tying run on second. He fans Zeal on the breaking ball. 9-8, and now Mike Myers, the lefty, gets the tapper from Helton harmlessly. And Arizona holds on to win it. Myers works that perfect ninth inning. Rocky battle all the way back from 9-1, to one, but still lose 11 pitchers involved in the game. D-Packs only six hits. They had nine walks. Arizona's won eight of nine against Colorado and 14 of their last 18 against the Rocks at the bar. Dodgers looking for their fourth straight win. Oh, hosting San Diego, bottom five. Mark Resolonic down the line. Sean Burrows. Sean Burrows hey, I can't get it out of my glove. Take another look right in the webbing. 
Get homeboy new glove. Chris Salonic, safe at first. He would eventually score. <laughs> Need to chuck it like Mulholland. That never happened ago. in Williamsport, you know. <laughs> Top nine, Dodgers up 4-1, tying run for San Diego at the plate. Ray Langford makes a run at it, but Marquise Grissom is at the wall. And Dodgers hold on to win for the fifth time in six games. They've also won six straight at home. Odalis Perez, six hits, one run, and eight and two-thirds. Prior to the game, L.A. placed Kevin Brown on the 15-day DL. He's got torn scar tissue.